So I'm here with Charlie Girard. Did I pronounce it right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say from Netlify? Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Now, uh, it was supposed to be in the, in the video. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this again. So I'm here with Charlie Girard from Netlify. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the, so each time here in the uh, Prismic Studio, we bring some people uh, that, you know, talk about around topics of uh, JavaScript and um, CSS and all of that. I guess front end is your thing as well. And uh, especially, you know, a bit about Prismic. Prismic is a, a, a CMS and, you know, it's a CMS that uh, allows you to build application with any technology because it has an API. And that's why it's interesting to kind of talk about all the topics, not only the CMS, you know, uh, so anything related to how to, to build things, uh, how to, you know, use CSS, anything like that mm -hmm. is interesting for our users. And that's why we're doing this kind of series of videos. Cool. So please, can you tell us first maybe about yourself? About Who me? are you? Oh, uh, so well, my name is Charlie. Uh, I'm a front-end developer. I live in Sydney in Australia. Uh, I've been doing um, that for about five years now. So I've worked in a few different environments from consultancy to being a creative developer and then to like a product company. So I've tried a few different environments. Cool. Uh, but also what I'm really passionate about is some personal projects that I do on the side that have nothing really to do with anything that you would sell, but just uh, exploring the world of technology and tinkering with hardware or augmented reality or whatever kind of like idea that comes to mind. So. And I hope we'll be able to touch on that as well. Sure. <laughs> so you said you started with uh, being a creative developer. With it. Can you explain more what, what you did there? Um, so at some point, um, so I, well, I first started uh, as, a, as a consultant, but at some point I uh, pivoted. And when I moved to, I worked in London for a few months. So we're consultant, consulting yes. for what? Oh, um, so when I started my career as a developer, I was working a, a, in a consultancy called ThoughtWorks. And oh, I know ThoughtWorks. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. uh, I was there, so there was my first uh, dev. In job. London? No, no, in London. It was in Sydney. So I kind Sydney. Of like, okay, ThoughtWorks yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in Sydney. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I studied there as a graduate developer. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it was like part, um, you know, coding for clients, but also consultant uh, in terms of telling them, you know, sometimes people think that they know what they should build, uh, but sometimes what you think you should build is actually not what you should build. You, if you spend time talking to actual um, customers of this client, then you'll make them realize that they actually need to be building something else. So it was a part of coding the solution that we thought was right, but also advising clients on how they should do something or maybe, you know, prior reprioritizing their goals and things like that. And, and that yeah. was five years ago or something? Uh, yes, so I started five years ago. So I did that for about um, two and a half years and then I moved on to creative developer. Cool, I, 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 I hope you learned a lot. Of I mean, ThoughtWorks is a good company where yes. they, they, are, they have a lot of good people there. Yeah, and also being- And also um, in Australia, they're good yes. as well. Yeah, well, I mean, because, well, um, we, they really want to make sure that they hire um, people who want to do like the right thing, who care a lot about their job, who care about sharing knowledge with other people. So I think you end up with people who are you know, very smart and very nice and who are really willing to share the knowledge, not really just keeping them for themselves. It's more, um, you know, we evolve like as a, as a group of people. Yeah, developers. and they, sh so. they shared a lot on conferences. Uh, I remember a lot of speakers from uh, ThoughtWorks, they shared a lot of knowledge about archi software arch architecture and, you know, patterns and, and stuff yeah. like that. It was really interesting. Yeah, definitely. And then you started, you changed, uh, back then you were at Sydney. Yes. And then you moved to London, you told yes. me, right? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I moved to London for a little bit because I didn't quite like it, so I didn't stay very long. Um, but I, at the time, I worked as a creative developer for the New York Times. Um, so I was in the part of the New York Times that's more about uh, branded content. So it's not really the news that you read on the website, but it's sometimes you have some pages where you have brands coming to the New York Times saying, hey, we want to be on one part of the website. And Uh, instead of just having an ad, you create branded content. So mm -hmm. you create actual content by journalists, but it's around um, uh, a brand. And um, our role was to create um, more like immersive and interactive ways to, to interact with that content. So instead of just reading an article that you would scroll, um, it would be making something a bit more playful, like adding some 3D on the web or uh, using the Web Audio API to make um, content nice. a bit more interactive. So so it's more like uh, some, some kind of embedded content of like, uh, yeah, some, uh, 
uh, like animations of some yeah. some facts or things yeah, so like it that. was it was more around yes interactive um, content animations uh, audio 3d like whatever um, would make a piece of content more interesting for people to to read and how, how was that how, how long did you did you do that I stayed for about five months there because I think okay. so at first I was interested in the role of creative developer because I thought it would really um, bring what I like to do on the side but being paid for it um, and the thing is in reality it's not really like that because you end up not being that free to build your own ideas it's more like whatever your boss or the client wants you to build you end up coding it but you don't have um, what I was really interested in is was to have the freedom to explore uh, new tools or new ideas, like the same thing that I do on the side, but on the job. And it's not really what happens. It's like when you work on a at a at an agency, and basically you might have an idea that you're really excited about, but if the client says no and they want the more basic idea, then you have to build. But do you one. think it's the, it's the state situation for all kind of agencies? Because oh, I w I'm not sure. I think well, I see some agencies building like really amazing content, um, but at the time at the at the New York Times, I think I couldn't. Um, I didn't feel like I could explore with as much mm -hmm. freedom as I wanted. Um, so I realized, well, I think the creative things, I'd rather do it on my own time where I have the freedom to really explore um, that space. And then you moved back to Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I went back to ThoughtWorks. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, really? I don't know <laughs> yes, that um, part. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I went back for about uh, a year and a half. And, um, and then I think slowly I realized, well, uh, you know, after about four and a half years in a career as a developer, when you're a consultant, you don't really go deep uh, yeah, into yeah, your topic. Yeah. So I, I noticed that thing, and it yeah. was frustrating. Yeah, so that's why I, then I moved on to Atlassian. Because uh, you, you do this thing, but you don't know if it succeeds or it's, not, what yeah. happens after. Yeah. What are the mistakes that you did? Exactly, yeah. And so how, yeah. yeah. Like, there's good things because you explore a lot of different technologies, because so sometimes, it's wide, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, I do a bit of Python now or a bit of Java. So I in terms of like breadth of knowledge, like um, it gave me that, but in terms of depth, um, I couldn't really, like you don't always have the time to really go deep in, in a framework or, or yes, I, I ended up thinking, I'm actually not sure, I can't really say I built this because by the time you leave a company after six months, I don't know if my code is still there or if they just removed everything or, so yeah, I, I ended up being like thinking I want to, move more towards like a product company where I want to stay there for a while and really build something that's going to be um, lasting longer. And when you make a decision, you know that it, that is going to last. It's not more. It's, yeah. it's t typical. Maybe maybe it's like a path that every uh, like yeah. a lot of people <laughs> go through that, right? You go to, to consultancy and then you spend a lot of time there and it's like, oh, there's something missing. Yeah. I need to go deeper. And then you go into yeah. like, uh, you know, a product company or something like that. I think because when you start, when you're a junior developer, you don't want to be stuck into one thing. Like I remember when I started, I didn't know if I wanted to really be front end or back end. I thought it would be a mistake to only focus on one. So I was like, I'm going to be a full stack developer. So I think consultancy was the good way to do that because I, well, I was kind of like full stack, but then. And you make your own opinion, right? Yeah. At some point. Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, no, I think I really prefer uh, front end. I think this is where I'm, I have more expertise and I'm more interested. Um, so yeah. No, but there's so many, there are so many things when you start as a junior, yeah. you're, like you have so many anxieties and, <laughs> and you're scared of so many things when you do like five years after it's like, like <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. It was, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. I was, even now you can tell the new juniors like you're gonna be fine. Yeah, you know? but they, they yeah. will not believe, believe no, you. They no, think I like know. oh, they're scared. Yeah, like, you know, usually what does I'm, it mean? Yeah, I just tell people like you know what, like do your own mistakes, and then you know I'll tell you I fucking told you no, <laughs> <laughs> no. But you you can be like you know if if you have any question I'll be there or you know yeah when they don't when they don't believe me if I try to help them it's a bit frustrating but I'm thinking. People have to make their own, you know, path, and uh, and if they come through, if they struggle through the same things as I do, then at least I'll be there and I'll be like, okay, I know what it's like. Don't worry, it's gonna be fine. Uh, do do, like you, do you remember something like you were really worried about when you started, and like now you say like, oh, that was that was nothing. That I think nothing. it's what I didn't realize is when you start, you think that senior developers know everything. <laughs> <laughs> they know I'm what, like, what no. they're talking about. No, no, they don't yeah. know. They have but no yeah, idea. That was the, because when I was looking up to my senior developers and I was thinking, there's no way that 
I'm going to know everything like they do. And in the end, like now I realize what they don't know everything, but they know how to get there or or they know because they have done it so many times that they know it's just it's not you don't go from knowing nothing to just knowing absolutely everything. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's mostly maybe about knowing how to handle a situation yeah. if, if something doesn't work. At yeah. least, you know, you or have it's that. just asking the right questions or yeah. like you don't know the syntax by heart, but you know kind of the way to get there. Um, so I spend quite a lot of time with uh, junior developers in Sydney who go through the same bootcamp that I did. Uh, and I feel like they f- they think the same about senior developers as well. So they think like, oh, my senior developer, like they know everything. I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get that question often. Like when yeah. we, we, we onboard someone new on the developer team and then they, you know, they get impressed so easily with, with things. And then I, <laughs> I tell them, look, like really, we might sound we know what we're talking about. Yeah. We just. You know, it's uh, you should try things and it then makes you feel think. better about yourself. Though it's like yeah, I totally know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now everyone knows that we don't, right? <laughs> yeah, no, but no, but it's it's also fine because I think um, throughout the years you get a lot more comfortable not knowing uh, something. It's like when I was a junior, I really felt like maybe I needed to know um, everything, or if I didn't know something, I felt bad. Like I felt, oh, maybe I'm not good at this. Whereas now it's like. Well, I don't know because I've never done it before or I don't know because yeah, I've done see, it once that, and I forgot. That's a huge change. You know, yeah. you start because I guess this is what schools make us like. This is the anxiety that schools build in us. Yeah. Is that like, oh, I don't know. And that might be a problem. I will not get yeah. my exam. Whereas I don't know. But if someone in the world, I, I used to tell that in the first I worked at, uh, at a digital studio. Yeah. And they would ask me, do you know how to do that? I said, no. But if someone in the world did it, I think yeah. I will be able to do it. There is no reason. And I will always fi- find it funny, but it's that. It's yeah. that. Is it feasible? Then given the, the right amount of time, I yeah. will be able to do it. That's, and it's also, that's if you've that. never done it before, you can't just magically know know how it works. Uh, but at first, it is uncomfortable to admit that you don't know something. Mm. Um, and there's definitely a mistake that I did when I was a junior where I was not always asking questions because I was like, if people realize that I don't know, then, you know, like, I'm not good at what I do. And now I'm kind of like, I should have asked because sometimes like, there's gaps in my knowledge now where I could have asked, um, you know, years ago. And now I have to do the work of, you know, um, getting back on, on that. But that's that's interesting because now sometimes I, I still get a bit uncomfortable if I don't know something, but I'm like, okay, it's normal. Like, I can't know what I've never, you know, um, faced or or if I've never read about something that I can't just magically know. Uh, so now it's more a step of like, okay, if I realize that I don't know something, then I might just like, either I look it up straight away or I write it down. I'm like, okay, I'll look at it tonight. Um, so that I actually, I feel this gaps of knowledge. Um, and this may probably comes with the confidence that you start building by knowing that there is a value that you have and it's not yeah. in knowing everything is somewhere else. You know? Yeah, and it's also like I think we're all we're all learning. Um, I think if somebody pretends that they know everything, it's just it's not true. Like it's just not possible. You when somewhere. you look at the world of programming, it's absolutely impossible that you know everything. Because it's changing. Yeah. You might know at some point yeah. something, but you know, two yeah. days after something changes in, in browsers and that's yeah, no, you it, it's just not anymore. possible. Right. And depending on what you've been building in your career, you only know that little part. Um, so it's just you. I think everybody. That's why I like when you work in a new company and people come from different backgrounds because they might have worked on websites or with certain APIs or frameworks that you haven't used, and then you can kind of share that knowledge and kind of yeah become better, but all together, not only just individually. Um, right, right, right. So and then you, you said you moved to uh, Atlassian, right? Yes. And you work in a, in a product. Yes, for a product, uh, Jira. Right? Yeah. Jira. Yeah. Okay. So that that is a different. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I haven't used uh, Jira for a while. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> it's like either you hate it or you love it. So <laughs> yeah. it's fine. Uh, it is it is a huge product. And it's, um, I think people are aware that the learning curve is a bit difficult, but then once you know how to um, use it, it's actually quite powerful. But it's interesting to be working on a product like that because at first I was interested in the challenge of building something that um, millions of people use. Uh, There's definitely challenges in that. 
Um, and I totally forgot where I was going with this. Uh, oh yeah, but then I, um, you realize that when you actually join that kind of big company, you end up owning a very small part of the product. Oh so uh, yeah, you it's think, specific, yeah, when you think like, oh, I'm going to build Jira, it's like, uh-uh, you're going to build this <laughs> in Jira, and that's that's interesting because you also. Um, in the way, like there's no other way to, to do this. When a product is that big, you can't own everything because it also moves so fast. Um, but how, how long did you stay in Jira? In uh, sorry, um, at uh, Atlassian. Well, I'm still there just right now. Before yeah, yes, I'm yeah. in the process of moving on. But uh, eight months. Um, eight months. Yes. Okay. Um, I think that it's also um, interesting to evolve in that type of environment because. Sometimes it, it works and sometimes it doesn't work out. I think to me, um, I didn't realize how big it was. And I feel like sometimes the the feeling that I'm owning a very small part is maybe something that I don't really like. Like I want to be more uh, involved or sometimes it's so... I guess I tend to be exactly the same way. Yeah. I, I like, I don't know, it's, it's hard to kind of, it's good if you can like solve these little problems because they, they they mm. matter a lot these kind of little little things yeah but you know i guess maybe it's a kind of profile I, um, same thing i like to be part of that the understanding the big picture mm. the, and, and working on the big picture maybe and this I is feel, what you're yeah. talking about right and it's um because when teams are separated into um, smaller features, you don't you don't make the decisions that you would like to make yeah, yeah, in yeah. architecture or, or something, or at least have a discussion about that. Yeah. Like, okay, and why are we doing this way? Is yeah. there a way that we or do you it have to be thing? more a part of the leadership or have been uh, haven't been there for for longer? And um, I think it's just a, like a, a little preference because yeah. everybody's like super smart there as well, which can be quite impressive sometimes. It's like you're like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I think it's um, I like. Some Sometimes that I, I join a company and sometimes I realize, well, I learn along the way what I like and what I don't like for the next um, thing. And, and even uh, I think being staying in Sydney uh, is I love Australia and I love Sydney, but I think um, I need to. It's too far. <laughs> so it's also been part what, of What does my, it mean too far? I well, mean, uh, I mean the a, word is too far from you. What, what does it mean? Yeah, I think well, it's because I um, uh, I travel quite often um, during the year. And I think... Oh, yeah, conferences, forth, right? You yeah, do conferences. Yeah, so going back and forth between either Europe uh, to Australia and then the US and Australia. It's like every time I speak at a conference, I have to take at least one week of leave mm. um, because oh, yeah, of the time that. difference uh, and because the conferences are two days and I arrive one day before I leave one day after. Like it's with them um, traveling that often um, is becoming a bit a bit difficult and a bit tiring as well. Changing time zones every... By every the way, maybe... Is, Maybe we should yeah. tell people that you're now oh, yeah. literally in a jet lag, right? No, yeah. no. <laughs> I just landed this morning. Just to give you some excuses <laughs> yeah, whenever yeah. you do mistakes yeah, in now. In case you, know. you don't like what I'm saying, it's just because I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. That's for the next video. Maybe talk more, start talking about technology. Mm -hmm. Cool. cool.